I'm sitting here with Connie Jaycox on the last day of the townie meeting in Caesar's Palace. And Connie um, does my favorite pet peeve, and that is dentists don't know their numbers. They love to learn, you know, fillings, root canals, crowns, bridges, then you ask them any accounting number, they have no idea. And Connie started Bottom Line Bookkeeping Solutions. Her website is BLBK Solutions, so Bottom Line Bookkeeping Solutions. Uh, she's a townie, she posts, she lives in uh, Vancouver, Washington, and she helps dentists do their accounting. Tell, tell them what you do. I provide a virtual bookkeeping service to where I go in, I provide them bookkeeping as a basic feature, but I also help them with a concept called Profit First, which is a cash management system that um, helps them have a better focus on their overhead and understand that all the money that comes in isn't free money to spend, that they need to be prepared for tax time, they need to be prepared for major purchases, and just also that it helps me to explain to them that the production number doesn't necessarily transfer to a cash number. And that's their biggest um, area that, you know, making them understand that production of a million dollars doesn't mean you have a million dollars cash coming in necessarily. Well, well, this is April 22nd, and I'm, and every year, thousands of dentists are literally stunned. Right. When their CPA tells them how much they owe the IRS, and they're like, you got to be out of your mind. Right. And I'm sitting here reversing, I'm thinking, no, you have to be out of your mind. And it's sad um, because, you know, we go to dental school eight years, and they just keep teaching calculus and physics and geometry and mm -hmm. all this stuff that you'll never, ever use one time as a dentist. <laughs> and then something as simple as making payroll or right. figuring out your taxes or paying your taxes quarterly was never discussed once, but it's something they got to learn day one. So right. um, so what percent of your clients are dentists? About 45 right now. Nice. And I'm trying to move more to where I focus strictly in the dental industry. I, I, I've seen... Um, when I got out of school 30 years ago, you know, the, the MDs had 58 specialties, the dentists mm -hmm. had nine, but the accountants didn't have a specialty for dentistry. Right. And I think that is what the market needs. That's why I want to do anything to promote you. That's why I'm podcasting you. Thank you. Um, I think so many dentists um, are stressed out. I think a lot of it leads to substance abuse, uh, mm -hmm. uh, marriage, um, the top three marriage problems, um, money, right. sex, substance abuse, and a lot of those can all be tied into why, why does he come home and drink a 12 pack? Because he, de he doesn't know how to make payroll tomorrow. Right. But he's really busy and right. he's got all this money coming in, but he's broke. Right. And, and, and uh, so, um, so what do you do for your clients? I mean, if, if one of my townies was listening mm -hmm. and say, well, what, what, what would you do for me? What does it cost? How does it work? Well, first off, I would start with what I call, what's called a profit assessment. And in the Profit First system, I go in and I look at your historical numbers. I look at your historical production numbers as well as your historical accounting numbers so that I can get a good sense of what the practice has been doing. Then I show you where you're at after I've done this analysis. Whether you're at, you know, 80% overhead or, you know, my very first dentist that I did a uh, analysis of Zahn was at 90% overhead. You can't sustain that. It, it will kill you, like you said. It is gonna, the stress will kill you. So we look at then, we look at in detail everything you're spending money on. Is it, you know, you have fancy office, your rent is huge, did you buy the latest shiny object that you were sure was going to have a huge return on investment and nobody knows how to use it? Um, you know, is it just little things? Are you taking, you know, the staff out every month for 
for lunch for to the tune of a couple of hundred bucks that you just really don't need to be doing. You know, we go into the details of the overhead and start to look where we can cut to bring you to a place where you can be profitable. You can't be profitable with 90% overhead. There's no room because that overhead isn't typically counting their tax burden when they when they think overhead. Um, so, so your website is blbksolutions.com. Correct. And BLBK stands for Bottom Line Bookkeeping. Bottom Line Bookkeeping Solutions. BLBK Bottom Line Bookkeeping Solutions. If my homies went to your website, what what are they going to find? They're going to find um, just some basic ideas of what Profit First is about, how it works. They can also schedule a free 30-minute uh, consult so we can just talk about where they're at, where they want to be, um, company history. I'm, I'm working on starting a blog, which you helped me with my first article. Thank you very much. Uh, That's how we met. Where was it on? On LinkedIn? Or where, where, I, uh, I called you. Oh, you called me? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, it, it, it just Again, it's just my... Um, my most biggest pet peeve, I mean, I, I, I tell Dennis, I mean, get, get your house in order. Right. Get profitable. Then I understand boys love toys. And then go, then go decide if you want a boat or a laser. Right. If you want a cabin or a cad cab. I don't care. Right. What I don't like is when your house is not in order mm -hmm. and then you're making a bunch of batshit crazy financial yes. decisions thinking that that's going to um, fix your problems. Just get right. your house in order right. and then you can decide if you want to take the money and buy your wife a Gucci purse, a trip mm -hmm. to Hawaii, or a laser or a CAD cam or exactly. a CBCT. Um, but um, let, let, let's go, I want to get more specifics. Um, what do you recommend that they do their accounting on? Are you uh, QuickBooks? Are you a Peachtree? I use QuickBooks online. And I find that to be a very, you know, fully functional for a dental office. It has all the features that they need. It, you can do payroll. You can do all your accounting. For, for, first, I, I know how my homies think. First thing they're thinking, is it secure? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You don't have to worry about your mother-in-law hacking in and reading all your numbers. Or, <laughs> as long or, as you don't or, give her your password, you're good. But but there's there's no um, chance they're going to get to Quicken online and then get into your bank accounts no, at it Wells has, Fargo. It has or, as high or higher level of security as your bank. So you like QuickBooks Online. I do. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, the thing that I'll never forgive Bill Clinton for Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't for Monica. I mean, I always thought <laughs> hell if I was married to uh, Hillary. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know what I would have done. Uh, but I. Um, but Microsoft in Seattle mm -hmm. tried to buy Intuit. Isn't Intuit around? Intuit where? owns is the parent company of QuickBooks. Yeah, but where are they located? I believe they're in California. Yeah, in California. And and um, you know, Bill Gates, one of the smartest visionaries ever. You know, basically Quicken was. I mean, um, Microsoft was email, Word, and PowerPoint. Right. And he saw all these small businesses and he realized that um, the accounting had to be a part of it. Right. And Bill Clinton blocked the merger on antitrust. So, and I thought, that is insane because even, I mean, where I'm from in Kansas, it's the same problem. You have two types of farmers. One farmer sits on a tractor all day mm -hmm. while his wife is at the kitchen table doing all the accounting, the mm -hmm. overhead, right. um, selling uh, the, the wheat ahead of time on the futures exchange. Then you got the other farmer whose wife is Catholic and raising seven kids, and he has no help or partner, mm -hmm. which is what you can be. Right. Because so many dentists tell me, well, you know, I don't have any support at home. It's like, well, that don't matter. I mean, it's the greatest legend in the world. Bill Gates didn't, didn't build his company with Melinda. Right. I mean, she came later. I mean, I mean, the, the greatest legends in the world that can do it solo mm -hmm. if they have someone like you supporting them. Exactly. You could be, you could be the, the wife at the kitchen table hammering out these deals while they're sitting in an operatory drilling, filling all day. I mean, do do your clients, are they able to pick up the phone and talk to you Absolutely. about these numbers? Absolutely. And and we we schedule either, you know, monthly, quarterly, depending on what they feel they need. Usually if they're really starting out in a in a bad place, it would be a monthly vi video chat 
um, so we can talk it through and say this is where it, what's happening. You know, this is where we've improved. This is what we're going to do next. We we schedule we create a plan on how to be successful um, with the profit first system. We we separate your money as it comes in. We put away the tax burden immediately. It never gets into your overhead account. You can't spend it. We put it away. We put away money for profit at the beginning. Whether we have to start at 1% or 10%, depending on where you begin, we set that profit away as the money comes in on a bi-monthly basis. And we give you a profit distribution like you would give a shareholder quarterly. So you get a bonus. The dentist, you know, so many of them feel like they're working so hard, working so hard, and they're not making any money. Well, we're setting it aside beyond your salary and quarterly, you're going to get a bonus from that profit account because we've set it aside, we've trimmed down your overhead to a, a smaller plate, so you can't you can't spend that the money that's not there. Um, and and when you when you would um, when you start with a dentist, uh huh, what is the average condition when when you, when you meet a new client for the first mm -hmm. time? Why are they calling you? Where are they at in their head? Where, where are they at in accounting? Why are they calling you? What, what, what? Because right now, um, podcast is killing radio. These, uh -huh. the, these dentists are all commuting to work right now, about 85%. Right. Another 10%, maybe they're on a treadmill, Stairmaster, whatever. Right. And so they're all by themselves, and they're thinking, well, is this for me? I mean, so tell them where, who's calling you, what state of mind are they at, what, what are their problems, what, and, and your solutions, mm -hmm. your bottom line booking solutions, what problems do they have that your solutions are helping them? The initial reason that they call is they're overwhelmed. And they have no idea what their numbers are, how to handle the accounting. You know, they don't, they don't want to deal with payroll. This time of year is often a time I get calls because they've got this big tax bill and they didn't prepare for it. Um, I don't do taxes. That's an accountant's job. That's not what I do. What I do is I help them. First off, if they're overwhelmed, I come in and look at their books. Oftentimes, you know, the plus and the minus of QuickBooks is it's easy to use. But if you don't understand accounting, you can mess it up. And so often they've messed something up and they have no idea what they've done. So that's another reason they'll call is, I don't know what I did to my QuickBooks, can you fix it? And the answer is yes, I can. It may take a while depending on how well you did. <laughs> and you just do this remotely from home? Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, I, I think dentists um, don't understand that, you know, a CPA is really basically for a third-party tax collector. Right. I mean, they do a profit and loss statement, which is a statement of income, which has artificial numbers like deferred taxes, depreciation. Yeah, right. Has really nothing to do with managerial economics. Exactly. Um, a statement of cash flow or, or, your, or your check register would have more to do with managerial economics right. than your 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 CPA. Mm -hmm. Yet they'll call their CPA for business advice and say like, well, do you think I should buy this $150,000 equipment? Well, he's only looking at it as a the tax Ex consequences, right. not managerial economics. And right, and, and that's a big problem. It's and, a, it's the problem. Right. It's the problem. They they're, they're not business people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you see it at restaurants and farmers. I mean, some restaurants they know their craft, they know how to cook, mm -hmm. but they don't know their numbers. Right. And restaurants has one of the highest mortality rates exactly. in free mm -hmm. enterprise, right. and it's because Chef Boyardee <laughs> didn't know the difference between a statement of income, a balance sheet, mm -hmm. a statement of cash flow. And I bet you, this is so, <laughs> this is so pathetic. But I mean, I mean, today, mm -hmm. right now, today. 80% of dentists could not even reconcile their own bank statement. 
I don't know if that's a good. No, it, it's it is. Probably, okay. If it goes under, they put in more money. If they have yeah. a balance, they spend more money. They don't know how to reconcile. Yeah. And, and, I'll, and I'll, get, I'll give you some um, some some data on this. Um, these these national uh, workout fitness chains, right? Like a Lifetime Fitness, mm -hmm. they know if they get you to sign up, they sign you up on a automatic monthly charge on your mm -hmm. debit card. They know the average person quits using their service at about eight months. Mm -hmm. They know the average person takes 40 months to be organized enough to go in there and cancel yeah. that automatic monthly payment. It's the business model of Spotify, mm -hmm. um, music, iTunes, Apple, desperately wants to get out of selling the song for a dollar or 99 cents or dollar 10 because they see all these music stations that spend all their time getting you one time mm. to sign up for five dollars a month unlimited music knowing full well mm -hmm. that half the people may never use it again right. for five years but don't don't reconcile their bank statement don't do their credit card charge don't see this monthly reoccurring charge mm -hmm. so so the business model the best business model with monkeys is to get them to sign a contract that you can ding their credit card every month mm -hmm. because whether you're good or bad, they don't have enough organizational skills to get off right. this. So, so that they, that, that, that is uh, Netflix, right? Net Netflix is bigger than HBO now. Same model. Mm -hmm. Once they sign you up for $10 a month, you may have just gone four months without watching a movie, mm -hmm. but you're not going to sit down at your dining room table and go over your bank statements and your credit card charge and say, right. hey, our family hasn't used Netflix in half a year. Why don't we cancel that $10 a month charge? Right. That's not how monkeys roll. They'd rather just run out of money and then go in and ask their boss for a raise. Mm -hmm. Right. I just need more, like the government. <laughs> we, ju we, just, we just need more money. It's always yeah. they need more money. They can never go back and say, you know, we don't, we don't have a department of cell phone. We don't have a department of PCs. Why do we have a department of agriculture? Are you shitting me? They've been growing <laughs> wheat for 15,000 years. Mm -hmm. Why do we need an agency to manage wheat farmers? When the more important thing, the smartphone, when there's no agency managing that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always, they, they, you know, I'm just, I'm speaking to the choir with you. <laughs> so then, so then, um, what percent of these dentists are already on QuickBooks Online? Are a lot of them are on QuickBooks Desktop, and it's a very easy conversion to the online. Um, I, in fact, all the dentists that I have have in my in my practice right now have gone from desktop version to the online version. And how do you technically switch your QuickBooks on your desktop PC to QuickBooks Online? Um, it's very simple. There's um, there's a couple of ways, um, but there's actually a, a button in QuickBooks desktop that says, "Would you like to upgrade or change to QuickBooks Online?" Okay. Now I know um, I know how my homies think. Okay. I've been on Dental Town four hours a day since 1998. The things they always think is that, you know, um, if I go online. Or, or I get help from you. Uh -huh. they, they, they know, so many people say that 50% of dentists are being embezzled from by their mm -hmm. front desk staff. So they're sitting there thinking, okay, if I move this online, is, are my front desk girls, is, does this make it easier for them to embezzle? And I'm sorry to say this, so rude to say <laughs> no. to you, how, how no. do I know that I don't give you all my information? And next thing I know, you're embezzling from right. me. And I'd rather have a really uneducated girl answering, doing my recall. Mm -hmm. I'd rather worry about that than someone like you who's super sophisticated and now has all my, all my information. But I don't. Because you put in your bank information into QuickBooks Online. I don't have that information. I don't have access to your bank. I have access to your QuickBooks data. It automatically updates from your bank. And if you've changed your password, I'm going to have to call you and say, could you update QuickBooks? Because you've evidently updated your password in your online banking. So then how do you embezzle then? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, Connie. Tell the nah, truth. Nah, nah. Tell the truth. I'm a good Catholic girl. I don't embezzle. So do, do you, would you ever be able to help the dentist figure out that someone is embezzling from him? I, I would be able to see anomalies, not necessarily part of what, yes, I would be able to help with that. Would I always catch it? No, I can't say I could always catch it. But since... 
I can would get information from both your your practice management and your accounting, and I make sure those two balance every month. You know, the, all the this deposit you say you got ended up in the bank. So, so do you tie into their practice management software too? I. I don't necessarily tie into it, but I do get reports from it. How, how do you get reports from Docs? Uh, so he's on, he's on QuickBooks desktop. He pushes the button, he calls you. And by uh, the way, what, what is your number? What, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, my number is 360-524-3232. So it's 360-524-3232. Three two three two, right? And that's BLBK Solutions. And what do they want to email you? They can email me at Connie, C O N N I E, at BLBKSolutions.com. Okay, so so um, they call you, they email you, they go to your website, desktop, they do the button, they get converted online. How do they get their reports? Most of them, about 40% are on uh, Henry Schein's Dentrix, about right. 40% are on EagleSoft. How do, how do they get those reports to you? Um, through a, a secure file share system that they can upload them to me. Um, do any of the practices, what, what if she's young and she's, uh, she's working at corporate dentistry and she's gonna open up her office next year. Mm -hmm. Are there any dental office practice management systems that you've liked more than the others? Or do you think the reporting is better for doing what you do? Um, that's hard to say because so much of it is about, I've heard a lot of good things about open dental. I know. I, I haven't, I don't have a practice that's using it yet. Um, I'm switching. Yeah. Next month, I've been uh, my dental office uh, turns 30 year. I graduated 30 years ago, May 11. I know awesome. what you're thinking. I only look like I'm 21, but I'm right. actually 54. That's awesome. And, and this is no cosmetic what, surgery. What either. is your it's routine? It's all natural. <laughs> Perfect. And, um, I'm on that too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but if you go to Dental Town and uh -huh. we have that um, search um, bar, and that search bar, I always show it to everybody because that thing cost me 50 grand from Google. And you don't update the software, you buy a Google box. So every time I want it even better, I gotta buy a $50,000 box. And you come to Dental Town, all the servers are black, except the Google appliance is yellow. And um, if you type in Dentrix, it brings up 100 threads, they're all bitching, moaning, complaining. Mm -hmm. EagleSoft, same thing. Open Dental, all raving fans. Mm -hmm. I've been on um, Soft Dent since day one. Oh, uh -huh. I was owned by Car Kodak, Carestream. It's, mm -hmm. It has a different owner about every six weeks. Um, <laughs> but I'm switching to Open Dental just because of Dental Town, uh -huh. um, seeing the raving fans. But the, but the thing I'm hearing is that the name Open is because it's open and it interfaces more mm -hmm. with other vendors, other data. It's like like I, if, anytime I go into a call center, Mm -hmm. where a dentist rolls over their phone to a call center. Mm -hmm. They say it is so hard to log in and find the information, Dentrix or EagleSoft or whatever, but Open Dental they just love. Oh, uh -huh. Because it's more open. It's more, so it, it's it's like, like Apple. User friendly. Like mm -hmm. Apple is a closed system. Right. Whereas Google and Microsoft are more open systems. And uh, so anyway, um, so yeah, I, uh, I wonder if someday you'll be able to... Uh, um, going to Open Dental, and by the way, they're in Oregon, mm -hmm. and you're in I, Vancouver, Washington, which is right on the Oregon border. You should, and you know what? If you went down there, I, I'll fly down there and meet you there. Perfect. Be yeah. Because my, my goal, my my total goal, here's the problem in dentistry. I mean, mm -hmm. if I decide on dentistry, the number one problem is when you walk into Circle K, and they um, do they have Circle Ks in Oregon, or is that they just do. a feeding cell? Okay. <laughs> Because I know some countries, some parts of the country, 7 Eleven, yeah. Quick Trip, ours is a. But anyway, when you walk into a 7 Eleven, 7 Eleven selling you a bottle of water for a dollar. Mm -hmm. They know it costs them 80 cents. Mm -hmm. They know they're selling it for a buck. They know they're going to make 20 cents. Right. Now let's go into dentistry. Uh, patients scheduled for two fillings for an hour. Dentist has no idea what his costs were. Right. And then he signed up for 12 different PPO plans. So he's selling it anywhere from $90 to $190. Right. So when you go into a business where you're selling something that you don't know what it costs you for 12 different prices. Right. I mean, that's why I have no hair. I mean, I just, <laughs> I pulled it all out. I mean, it's insanity. It is. And, and then when you get a little bigger like me, 
I have an accounting team. I mean, I got two bookkeepers. I got Stacy. I got, they're like you. Um, mm -hmm. um, um, Stacy used to be a teacher, and but just um, fell in love with bookkeeping 20 mm -hmm. years ago for me. Uh, Christy Corley, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, she did something else. We got into bookkeeping. So I, I got two full-time U's uh -huh. to help me run my business. Which is very rare. And But, but that's because I got 50 employees. Oh. They, they, these dentists got five employees, mm -hmm. so they don't have enough scale to right. get sophisticated enough, yeah. which is why I'm telling you, you <laughs> desperately need her. And, right. and, and her, if you're married, um, could be, if you're a woman dentist, could be your husband, if you're a male dentist, mm -hmm. could be your wife. But when I look at my dentist friends, it's kind of the 80-20. About 20% of mm -hmm. the wives are they're behind every good man as a successful yeah. woman, are, and now it's reversed, right. whatever. But someone's home doing all the numbers, helping, managing, all that mm -hmm. stuff. But a lot of these dentists got a, a stay-home mom with three kids, and they're involved in the church mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. They, they don't have a you. Right. And I, right. I, I noticed it when I was a kid at 10 years old with farmers. My dad used to point out for me, he said, you know, I feel sorry for Chuck, you know, because his wife has no idea what's going on in the farm. Mm -hmm. And he's carrying 15 hats. Right. Whereas your other friend, Greg, his wife is about 12 times smarter than her husband. Mm -hmm. And she likes the most just sitting on a tractor, you know what right. I mean? And stay out of my, stay out of my kitchen because all the books, all the paper. And I mean, yeah. she, and her husband didn't even know that she already sold the wheat on the Chicago Mercantile because the price was higher. Mm -hmm. And then, then when old Greg harvests his at the same time as everyone else's, then the price will plummet. Right. I mean, just all these little things. They, they don't right. have a, uh, a confinement, a consigliere, the mafia. The <laughs> Italian mafia always yeah. had a Jewish consigliere outside the family because if he would have been Roman Catholic and Italian, he would have been drinking the purple Kool-Aid and they all just <laughs> agree with each other. So they wanted someone outside, different religion, mm -hmm. outside the family to come in and be able to call bullshit. And, and that's where I think I offer a service that they're not going to get from an employee. They're not going to get from their wife. And when I say, you know, look, you can't afford to buy that shiny object today. We can plan for it and maybe do it six months from now. But you need to fix some of these other issues first. Maybe it's, you know, trimming down staffing. Maybe you need to schedule better. Maybe, you know, there's so many factors that could be your, your biggest problem. Often it's just not having a clue. Or like you say, mixing uh, the credit card that has 14 recurring uh, charges that they have no idea what they even are anymore. And the other part of this problem is um, when you're a doctor, a lot of them suffer the Saddam Hussein syndrome where mm -hmm. no one will stand up to him and tell no. I yeah. mean, Saddam Hussein, when he would tell his generals, well, we can, we can beat America, right? If you said no, they're going to absolutely crush us. He kill you. Right. And you see that in staff meetings where a lot of the staff meetings, the doctor does any of the talking because the staff don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. The wife at home doesn't feel safe. Mm -hmm. They need someone that can stand up to them. And that's what, I, that's what I told my management team. You know, the minute you can't stand up to me and call bullshit and say, Howard, that's the stupidest idea that is totally bad. If you can't stand up to me and call bullshit, then I will have to fire you. Right. Because I can't have a I can't surround myself with a bunch of yes people. Mm -hmm. And Dennis will go to a convention and get all excited about the hundred thousand dollars shiny object, come home all enthusiastic mm -hmm. to his wife and staff. Well, who's gonna stand up and say, Doc, you can't afford that? Right. He's like, I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Yeah. I'm in America. Right. I can do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they quote things like, You build it, they will come. And it's like, dude, that was a fictional Disney movie, okay? That <laughs> There's no right. footnotes on that. That's not mm -hmm. on Wikipedia. That's in your mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they, they need people to be able to stand up to them and call bullshit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of dental labs are afraid of it because a lot of dental labs tell me, I can't call up the dentist and say, look, this impression sucks. Your mm -hmm. prep sucks. Everything about it sucks. And I know if it doesn't fit, you're going to send it back and want me to do it free. Some right. labs have balls and say, doc, this sucks. You need, to, you need to come down here and look at these preps. You need to take a course uh, mm -hmm. because I'm not going to redo your work for free. Mm -hmm. Because when you need a remake, you think it's my fault. And I see a hundred different dentists and your crown preps suck. I can't read the margins. Dentists need people to stand up to. And that's mm -hmm. another thing. You know, they always say successful people are always hungry and humble. 
Mm-hmm. They're humble, so they listen to their customers, they listen to their staff, they listen to their supply chain, they listen to their vendors, they listen. And dentists, how many of the American people have I said, dentist, physician, lawyer, humble? Not likely. Oh, yeah, they'd say, no, <laughs> arrogant, know-it-all, conceited. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they would just say every bad trait you can imagine. Mm-hmm. So what, what are you doing in your life to put out those vibes? I mean, my dental assistant Jan's been with me since day one, and I'll tell you, no one can stand up and call bullshit to me faster than Jan. I mean, she doesn't even blink <laughs> because she has trust. Mm-hmm. I mean, she literally has trust that I'm like a brother, a dad, a, mm-hmm. a sibling, an uncle, mm-hmm. and it, it's never going to get personal. It's right. business. And and you need a staff to feel totally safe. And when I go to staff meetings, or, or even the morning huddle, huddle, usually the dentist is doing all the talking. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, if, if that's the case, then you should have your staff meetings and your morning huddles without you. <laughs> you should not go so your staff can communicate to each other and work out the problems and work out the details. And maybe they'll come to you and present a deal. Maybe they feel safe, but you got to make them feel safe. You got to be hungry and humble and you got to get a consigliere. I think Connie would be an amazing one. And you got to get control of your numbers. You can't not know your cost and then sell it for 12 different prices. Right. right. So, what, so what else do you think um, you could educate them on? Well... First off, don't be ashamed that you don't know your numbers. It's okay. We can, I can teach you to understand them. I can give you the information you're looking for. Often, and, and it's, I think it's a crime that dental training doesn't include some basic accounting. Um, you, most of you go to dental school to own a business. So you need to know how to run one. And if you don't know some basic accounting, you know, even if it's the lowest grade you ever get, you know, you need to know that, you know, just because you have this this machine and it's an asset, if you owe a hundred thousand dollars on it, it's really not an asset yet. Oh yeah. Dennis, I mean they drive me crazy like like right, they'll go in their office and right now they're using a $17 impression. They'll use 3M Emperor gum. I've used it for 30 years. Mm-hmm. In a little sideless Premier Triple Tray. The whole the whole tray and impression, probably 17 bucks. Then 3M will come to him and say, forget 17 bucks. We got a $17,000 optical scanner, so you'll never need to take an impression again. It's like, okay, well, how many impressions can you take for $17,000? I mean... <laughs> I'm not Albert Einstein, but I think I could take a thousand impressions mm-hmm. for seventeen thousand dollars. And the dentist say, "Well, it sounds like it's cheaper to buy this seventeen thousand dollars." It's like, okay, well, um, you don't have any money, right? And and you you don't ha- and you're twenty thousand short to pay the IRS, right? And now you're standing here telling me that you'll save money buying a seventeen thousand dollar oral scanner. Exactly. I'm going to need you to pee in this cup. Because I want to know if you're stoned on drugs right. or if, you're, if your mama dropped you. I, I, I need to know what I'm dealing with. Uh-huh. And, and they never know their math. No. They no. never know their math. They but but, their but, math. The, but the shiny salesman, the shiny object, mm-hmm. the optical scanner, they're so right. damn excited. They're hard tracing. Um, what, what it, Dennis, um, what I love the most about Dennis mm-hmm. is every time I spend the night at someone's house, you know, when I travel, you know, mm-hmm. like when I go to lecture in Poland, I don't want to stay at the Marriott. Mm-hmm. I want to stay at the dentist's home, bring him in. I want to see how Polish people live. And uh-huh. I remember when March and me brought me over to Poland and I got to stay in his house. And the coolest thing the whole deal was being inside a Polish person's house. Uh-huh. Have you ever opened up a Polish person's refrigerator? No. Looks totally different than every refrigerator you've ever seen in America. It's like all <laughs> sausages and mm-hmm. tomatoes, all, all these things you never eat or boiled <laughs> eggs. I'm, you know, it's just so cool. But um, the thing about staying in a dentist's house is you'll always find a hundred nonfiction books. Mm-hmm. And then when the, you spend the night with someone who's not a dentist, not a physician, not a lawyer, it's all fiction, it's all mm-hmm. People Magazine, Fifty Shades of Grey, you know, <laughs> sports stuff. They're very intellectual. So I know right. a lot of my homies right now, I know a lot of them are driving work thinking, well, what could I read? But I want to call you. Uh-huh. But I want to learn accounting or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, um, um, I didn't take that course in school. Mm-hmm. What, what could they read to learn um, accounting? Um, especially, it'd be awesome if it applied to QuickBooks Online or uh, to learn the difference between a, 
a P&L, a mm -hmm. statement of cash flow, a balance sheet. Uh, they don't understand debits and credits. Right. And it's and so they don't counterintuitive have to. because it is. It's, it's, it's reversed. Backwards. <laughs> it's backwards. You take everything you learned in math and accounting just decides, oh, we're going to do it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what, what book, what would be your, your short list of books to read? Well, I'm not sure for an accounting book per se, um, you know, there's always the Four Dummies series, which is usually pretty helpful, I think, you know, like a QuickBooks for Dummies. Um, so do they got a, uh, um, for Dummies for QuickBooks Online or accounting or? Um, they have one for QuickBooks. I, I would imagine they have one for QuickBooks Online. I haven't checked. Um, but the one book I would highly recommend and for understanding just kind of overall a, a way to understand your cash management and to get control of it is Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. And that's the system that I use when I go in to help them. And it's a cash management system. It works with your natural behavior instead of against it. So what, what's the name of that book? Profit First. Oh, you sent me this. I did. This is um. This is uh. I got um. I had one book. Um. I just finished uh, Pathways of the Pulp by Stephen Cohen, mm -hmm. dental book, and then I'm uh, on the um the heart attack gene. Oh. And this is the book after uh, that oh, comes okay. up after that. So this is a uh, this is a uh, two down on my list. Perfect. Uh, but so this is um, Profit First by right. Mike Michalowicz. Is he Polish? He's got to be Polish, Ukrainian, or Russian. I believe it's Polish. Yeah. Okay. And um, Mike Michalowicz, author of The Pumpkin Plan, the toilet paper entrepreneur. So what would they, where can they buy this on? Where would they buy Amazon. this? Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, okay, well, talk about, uh, uh, and we should get him on the show. And we've... Right on. Okay. But anyway, so to hold that book and tell, mm -hmm. them, tell them what they're going to learn about Profit First. Well, with Profit First, it works with our natural behavior. You know, we all, when we're thinking about money, we log in and we look at the balance in our account. We go online, find the balance on our account. So what Profit First does is it works with that natural behavior and like I was mentioning earlier, we go in and we separate your money as it comes in on a bi-weekly basis. So all the money comes bi in. Bi-weekly means twice a week? Or twice a month. Twice a month. Bi-weekly, twice a month. Um, so all the money comes into an income account. And twice a month, we take that money, we distribute it over several other accounts. Profit owner's pay, taxes, and operating expense. And so the only place that you can spend money out of is your operating expense account. So we've, right at the start, diminished the amount of money that is available to spend. So when you look at that bank account, you don't have this idea that, oh, I have you know $50,000 available. Well, you don't you've only got 30,000 because you've already put money into your profit account, you've already put money in your owner's pay account, and you've already set aside your taxes. So by doing that, we work with your natural behavior, and as that number shrinks, you're gonna become more frugal. You're gonna be more aware, just, just as a natural behavior, without any kind of um, you know, you have this line item that has this budget amount, and you have this line item, and you're, you know, we're not doing that. You're looking at your bank account, and now that's all the money that you have to spend, and it instantly slows you down. Now, does QuickBooks Online, do they have an app so the doctor could hit that app on a smartphone and see those numbers and those account balances? Yes. QuickBooks Online does have a, an app for iPhone and And do you Droid. recommend that they... Um, Use a bank like Chase that has a, an app so they could see their accounts on, so they could open mm -hmm. up their QuickBooks online, see these accounts you're talking about, mm -hmm. and then go to the Chase online and look at those accounts. Well, they don't even have to go to the bank because QuickBooks online links with their bank automatically and, which, and updates. And which bank do you think they link with the best seamlessly? I haven't had trouble with any bank. For QuickBooks because, to link because, with. Um, it's a little bit trickier with um, some 
And, and which ones are some are credit unions? They right. have a. They're not as my my, my, my our our team. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we, we think that the chase online mm -hmm. is far more intuitive. Uh -huh. And we think Bank of America is far more. We, we almost think like a, a, the chase is like um, an, an iPhone, an uh -huh. Apple. And the Bank of America is very, it's not intuitive. Mm -hmm. we, we, we've had a lot more. Um, we just really like the chase one. And, and do you, I do have heard, or I've heard or that no they help. They're a good one. When we start to open up these multiple accounts, there's not the fees and stuff. I've heard that the, is it Spark or Chase Spark? Chase, Chase, Chase uh, Bank. Bank, yeah. Um, That's Jamie Diamond out of Chicago. He mm -hmm. was the number two guy between Citigroup and Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And then he was gonna be the successor, but rumor has it that he asked out Sandy Wiles' daughter on a date <laughs> and uh, he didn't get the date and he was uh, no longer working. <laughs> Uh, of course, you can't find that on Wikipedia, but that's what all the uh, that's what the rumor is. But I, I've had dinner with Jamie Dimon two or three mm -hmm. times, um, and when he's come to town, and I just think he's an amazing man. Who was the one that was doing all the illegal stuff? Was that Wells Fargo with the all the the sham bank accounts, or they were I'm setting up sure. multiple yeah. bank accounts and charge fees and all that? But, but anyway, but back, but back to our, our two competing was Chase and Bank of mm -hmm. America. And I just think that Chase is just a lot easier because mm -hmm. I know my homies, this isn't their core competency. Right. So anything I can get them to do to just to make it a little more easier to understand. And I think the most reason it needs to be easy to understand because they think their student loan in debt is a lot. Mm -hmm. Wait till they get divorced. And if one third of divorces are mm -hmm. over this money and you send all these mixed signals to your wife, like, my God, we did 5,000 a day. Right. And then Saturday she's at the mall like, oh, I'd love to have that Gucci purse. That's <laughs> only one day's work for you. And it's not one day's work for no. you. You did 5,000, you didn't make $5,000. You might not make $5,000 in two weeks. Right. And if your wife, or, or now you're the woman dentist and your husband, by the way, a lot of male dentists, uh, feel mm -hmm. bad that their wife makes so much more money than them as a dentist. And oh. they, they say they feel emancipated. And I say, well, you know what? Just don't think about that while you're vacuuming. <laughs> and, um, but, um, but there's a lot of mixed signals mm -hmm. when you're coming home saying I did five grand and then the spouse mm -hmm. thinks, oh, we have five grand to go spend at Home Depot tomorrow to start right. a new bathroom deal. So the more, the, the, and, then, and then substance abuse. There's a, a huge theory out there. It was a TED Talk mm -hmm. called the, the uh, Rat Park. Mm -hmm. And it said that um, if you put a bunch of rats in cages, uh, rats or monkeys or whatever, mm -hmm. and you give them a choice between water and drugs, they choose the drugs and, until they die. And that was the beginning of addiction disease. It was all mm -hmm. based on all these studies. Then finally, after everybody agreed with that for 30 years, they said, well, maybe they drank the drugs because they're in a freaking cage. So they mm -hmm. redid all the experiment, experiments, mm -hmm. um, water or water with drugs, but they made a rat park. They had other rats in there. They weren't mm -hmm. alone. They had things to play on and wheels and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And the rats all went to the water. Mm -hmm. And none of the rats OD'd on the drugs. So there's a lot of people, want, and, and a lot of people say, oh, that's not the cause of... Um, the disease. Well, if no one knows what it is, how do you know that it's not that? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think a lot of substance abuse with dentists is financial stress. They're uh -huh. stressed out of their mind. So they what do they do? They come home and do three shots of fireball and drink <laughs> a six pack of beer. And then they're, then they're, they're fighting with their spouse because they're like, I'm, I worked all day and look at this shit you bought when I was at work. Are you mm -hmm. kidding me? And, and it just spirals out of control. Right. And again, it's get your house in order. Right. And get you and your spouse. I, I am a firm believer that if you're married, these conversations they have with you mm -hmm. need to be on speakerphone and get the, the office manager, the mm -hmm. doctor, the spouse, you, mm -hmm. and get a grasp on these numbers. And it's far more important than learning how to place implants. I mean, I mean, your house is upside down and what's your best idea? Oh, well, I'm, I'm gonna add sleep apnea. Add sleep apnea, you, you already have a circus going. You have a three ring circus <laughs> going on. So you think it'll be better with a four ring circus or a five ring circus, and then you're gonna fly to Dominican Republic and learn how to place implants and bone graft? If you can't understand your numbers and make money on a cleaning exam and a filling and a crown, mm -hmm. you sure as hell ain't gonna add, make money learning five more procedures that again, you won't know the cost of. 
Right. And, and your understanding of your costs gets far more complicated as your menu increases. Right, right. And just, it's a necessary evil for every business. You have to know your numbers. And when you're an extremely educated person, you, you understand what you understand. Like you said, back to the humble. Don't be ashamed to ask someone who understands the numbers to help you. It's, it's an investment in your, in your future. It's an investment in your practice. You will do better if you have someone who is constantly watching the numbers, making sure they're accurate, and informing you whether that next step is doable at this point in time or whether you need to plan for it a little bit longer, prepare for it, and you know, you're willing, you're willing to talk to all kinds of coaches, all kinds of, you know, other professionals. Don't be afraid to have a bookkeeper who is going to keep track of your numbers and give you that information regularly. And, and, and this, this is dentistry uncensored. So what, what does this cost? It, it depends on the size of the practice. Um, it's, I charge a flat rate once I have a good understanding of what your needs are. And it's just, you know, it's anywhere from, depending on how, the size of the practice again. So it could be anywhere from, you know, $750 a month to $1,500. You know, it's so not, 750 to 1500 is about the range you're about working with About the range. Now. Once we've gone through, cleaned everything up, you know, there's the initial setup, yeah. cleanup, and that sort of thing. And, and, and what percent of this do you do virtual online? What, what percent of time do you need to meet in the flesh, go to the office? Um, probably, I would say 98% of it is virtual. Um, and then, uh, you know, we do video, we can do video chat, so we're yeah, meeting I, that I, way. Yeah, I always thought that was another weird thing. Like, um, right now we got a, a two speakers going mm -hmm. on right now, and there's probably 300, 400 in each room listening mm -hmm. to two speakers, but you could go to Dental Town Online uh -huh. and see these exact two same speakers right now, mm -hmm. and the course would be like, I think like 18 bucks or 36 right. bucks. What do you think it costs to fly down here and stay in right. a hotel? I mean, I mean, just the taxi mm -hmm. from the airport to the hotel yeah. costs more than virtual. And, not, and I, that's why Microsoft uh, bought um, Skype mm -hmm. for $8.9 billion. And that's why they just bought LinkedIn because mm -hmm. there's so many business people flying around. There's right. 27,000 international flights a day. And you know, you know, as a, as a cost cutter, right. how many of those guys are flying all the way to Asia to have a meeting like this for an hour where they should have just gone to LinkedIn, right. buzzed you, hit a window, and what's the difference? In right. fact, you want to tell you the funniest story ever? <laughs> so um, my girlfriend's um, daughter had a baby, and it's seven months old now, but for the first uh, five or six months, she wasn't around me, so I always talked to her over... FaceTime. Oh, uh-huh. And when I met her in the flesh, she saw me and she cried. And I'm like, you know, right, <laughs> this is grandpa. And she's looking at me like, who is this big gorilla? Get out of here. So she FaceTimed her. And I FaceTimed her. She's down there. And I go, Ryan. Ryan's all cool and like she does <laughs> every day. And then Ryan starts noticing, wait a minute, that monkey and I start getting closer and closer. And the baby just kept looking at the face. I'm looking at me, looking at the back of her. And finally, it took like a minute for her to realize, oh my God, that's, that's that guy on FaceTime. <laughs> so there's a, there's a difference that's completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. History, mm -hmm. and 305 BC, Pope so and so, you know. <laughs> so it, it's, it's not, it doesn't really um, motivate me or work well for me. Um, um, and my mom, you know, so it's, it's kind of different. I, 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 I like it. I, I like, um, I like religion and spirituality, which helps me be better today mm -hmm. with examples for my spouse, my kids, my work, my, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And she thinks that's <clears throat> pop culture, superficial mm -hmm. noise. Yeah. So I don't know where your son is on the <laughs> spectrum. So, so, uh, but, but, um, She's a, um, 
in Wichita mm. and uh, well connected. I mean, she knows everybody from yeah. everyone and uh, they might be the best of friends. They might be. Okay. Um, well, Connie, I, I think um, this has been um, an amazing uh, podcast. Uh, we've been going for uh, 45 minutes. Uh, your email is Connie at BLBK Solutions for bottom line bookkeeping solutions.com. You said they could email you Connie at BLBK Solutions. They could call you at 360 524 3232. Um, homies, I know, I know you just want to learn about the next and greatest ninth generation bonding agent. So, and you can't wait to throw it away and get the 10th generation and the 12th generation. But uh, um, again, when a new client calls you, Mm -hmm. What letter grade, A, B, C, D, F, would you give them when they call you about their basic understanding of their accounting, their costs, taxes due, all that stuff? When, when they start with you, where, what's, what letter grade would you give the average dentist? An overall grade would probably be in the C to D range because they don't, they know what's in their bank account. And that's the extent of, of a lot of their accounting. And, and can you really grow um, the ultimate dream dental office with a C to D understanding of accounting? Absolutely not. You yeah. can't. And, and you know what kind of the, uh, <laughs> so I was born in Wichita, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And in the church we went to, uh, my, my Catholic high school, Bishop Carroll High School, and there's a lot of churches that feed in that, uh, St. Francis, St. Mm -hmm. Pat's, you know, different ones. But in, the, in that little church um, was the founders of Pizza Hut, Dan and Beverly Carney, mm -hmm. founders of Godfather's Pizza, uh, the Shaw family, um, lo lots, of, um, lo lots of really successful deals. And, you know, the, uh, the founder of Sonic Drive-In, which mm -hmm. my dad, that's mm -hmm. where he learned to cut his teeth uh, in business. He had Sonic Drive-Ins. And, and um, Dan and Beverly Carney. You know what all the millionaires I ever met in my life said to me at one time or another? They go, the first sign um, of a millionaire is that you're hungry and humble. You're going to work hard, listen to your customers, your vendors. You know, if you're mm -hmm. hungry and humble and you're ambitious, you're going to get there. But the first sign of a multimillionaire is that by the time you get your first five employees, two of them, two of the five are bookkeepers. Wow. Because I, I look at the, the, you know, say you have a construction company and this guy's flipping a house, he's doing a, a water uh, damage, this mm -hmm. one had a small fire in the kitchen, and you gotta have an accounting team that knows how to bid each one, because they're just shooting for an 8% profit margin. Mm -hmm. The S&P 500 only has, on average, a 5% profit margin. These guys all knew their numbers. Mm -hmm. And the first sign of a disastrous business is that you go to eight years of college and become a dentist, a physician, or a lawyer, mm -hmm. and you just come out of school knowing the periodic table and calculus, and they're just disasters. Mm -hmm. And trying to turn that ship around, um, I mean, I, 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 I just, I cannot tell you how what you do is the most nearest and dearest <laughs> to my heart. I hope you listen. I hope you're commuting to war. If you're commuting to work with your spouse, and you're the dentist and your husband's the front office and you've had any marital stress over accountings, get a third party consigliere. Get someone that can call bullshit and neither of you are gonna take it personal. And, um, and I, I'm serious, you're in, um, I gotta tell you about, you're from Vancouver, Washington. Mm -hmm. This gives away my age. I don't know how old you are, but when I was a little kid, uh, my mom's oldest brother, um, Uncle Chick, uh, his real name was uh, Pat Wilcox, or Vaughn Wilcox. But um, when he joined the Navy, he was real little, and his best friend was real big, so they called him Big Rooster and Little Chick. <laughs> so we always called him Uncle Chick. And uh, by the way, what a story. Um, when uh, they bombed Pearl Harbor, uh, Chick and Rooster were uh, uh, 16, and you had to be 18 to join the Navy. Oh. So they lied, and they forged a deal, which evidently, according to Chick and uh, Rooster, that... Uh, there was mass lying going on. Mm -hmm. Well, when they got back, they had to keep the lie forever because right. it was big 
big penalties and crimes to lie <laughs> on those forms. I always thought, why didn't Roosevelt or, or Truman or some pardon all these lies? I mean, these boys all lied to go risk their life and get shot at and killed. Uh, but anyway, um, Mount St. Helens blew. Right. And Chick had, according to him, uh, like a foot of ash on his roof. Mm -hmm. And he took a peanut butter and jelly jar and filled it with ash and mailed it to me. <laughs> and I still have it. And I think it was close. Do you have any idea what year that was? I was born in 62. It was 80, 81, I think. So I would 81, be a 80. freshman. In, so I would have been a sophomore. 81? So I would have been in college when that thing blew. Is that right? 79. Somewhere between 79 and I'll say, uh, so were you alive then? Were you living? Oh, yes. You, were you there? <laughs> I was in the Puget Sound area at that time. I wasn't in the Vancouver So that was up by area. Seattle. Right. And uh, so uh, tell us about it. Well, it was very strange because all of a sudden you you felt the earthquake type aftershock. Did you feel the earthquake? I felt it, yeah. Um, and we got ash. It was, it was very strange. It got dark and, you know, the ash came floating in and now in the vancouver area um it was and may up, 18th 1980 80 okay but where i live now i live in the shadow of mount st helens and that ash is the best stuff for rhododendrons we for what rhododendrons what's that a flower oh okay i mean we have the hugest rhododendrons in that area like five six feet tall and there's something in that the acid and the mixture that the plants just love it, but uh, that's why uh, Adam Smith in 1776 he wrote the first economic treaties of wealth and nations, mm -hmm. and for examples like that he goes you have to have free and open trade because it's probably better to grow bananas in Jamaica mm -hmm. than Boston. Right. Uh, 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 volcano erupts and a certain flower grows there better. Mm -hmm. And you just have to. That's why free trade is always so much better because mm -hmm. everybody's different. So what's your clothes for these guys? They're listening to you right now. They're commuting right. to work. What, what's your clothes? You went to school for a long time to be a profitable business owner. You, your business is your dental practice. Don't let your lack of education in accounting keep you from being the success you should be. Find someone who can help you, know your numbers, get you on the right track to be that profitable practice where you get to be the dentist. You don't have to be the accountant. You don't have to be the front desk. You get to be the dentist. Take the time to make the call. And I, and I want to I close on this on a, a couple other examples about humility. Um, humility listens to your staff. Your staff come first. You treat your staff good, they'll treat your customers good. Your customers come second. Your customers treat your staff bad, you fire that customer. Your staff come first. Humility. Doctors, physicians, dentists, lawyers, you're, you're not a humble group of people. The whole world knows you're arrogant. Everybody knows you're arrogant except you. The most successful dentists I know are the most humble dentists I know. Um, I'll give you an extreme example. Um, substance abuse. Uh, about 85% of it in dentistry is alcohol, but the other 15% is opioids, uh, something that you know uh, even the rock singer Prince was into. Um, but when the DEA comes and knocks on the door of a dentist, the dentist said, raise your hand and say, I know, I, I, I know, I, I, I can't quit taking them. I, I can't, I'm addicted, I can't quit taking them. The DA is like, no worries, no worries, no worries. They get you in a program, you got a peanut cup for five years, you might have to go to inpatient, outpatient, whatever, whatever. And five years of having a peanut cup, those dentists are all cleaned up. The asshole that lies says, no, I'm not doing it, no. And, and he made forged entries in the charts. And oh yeah, he's gonna be smarter than the DEA and has all the records on Walgreens and CVC. That asshole gets his license taken away, goes to jail. I mean, it's like, so right now you don't know your numbers. You, you don't know your numbers. You're, she says a, a C or a D and that's only because she's a very sweet lady. If she was <laughs> one half of me, she would have given you an F minus. And, and, but you think since you're a doctor, you should know it all. And there's just, it's just counterintuitive for you to say, hi, I'm Dr. Smith and I eat Vicodin. I'm an alcoholic and I don't know what my costs are. It takes a humble man 
to raise her hand and get help. She's a she's adorable. She's sweet. She's not going to bite you. She's not going to say mean things. And hopefully, I'm trying to get you as many leads as I can because I know that will help my homies the most. Mm -hmm. But I want to follow up on this. I've got um, uh, Ryan or Zach. Um, we's we, uh, Nathan Sparks of Open Dental. I want to podcast him next week. His brother Jordan is the dentist, but he's really not involved in Open Dental. But um, after I podcast a Nathan and get switched over from Soft Dent to Open Dental, I would like to. Uh, um, how long does it take you to drive to uh, Open Dental from your place? I'm not sure. Are they in Portland? Uh, Salem, Oregon. Okay. That's Where is that? That's south of Portland. So if I was going to go there, I would fly into Portland? Portland? Or mm -hmm. do you think I could fly southwest into Salem? I don't think so. I think you'd fly Portland. How, how big a town would be uh, Salem? Salem's actually the capital. Oh, so it's yeah. a good size town? It's a good size town. So southwest, yeah. I'd fly there. Uh, would you fly there or drive there? I would drive. And how long would that take you to drive there? A couple hours. Because I... Um, because again, whenever I go to a call center, when you know the dentist open 32 hours a week and there's 168 hours a week, and the really smart ones, um, when they go to lunch or at the end of the day, roll their phone over so mm -hmm. a live person can answer it. And then when that person answers, they if they say if it's open dental, they can just pull up the schedule, look into all the accounts, mm -hmm. know everything about the patient. It's a great thing. Um, maybe. Um, um, you, we can all network together uh, to get more people, um, you know, um, getting their accounting open online. So right. someone like you right. can look at it and be their little Jewish consigliere, uh, even though you're a Catholic. Can you pretend <laughs> you're a Jewish consigliere? I can pretend. Okay. And uh, <laughs> because that's what these guys need, because um, right. as a dentist myself, I know I'd rather pull four wisdom teeth any day of the week than look at accounting. Right. I mean, it's just, and, and that's the problem. It's not that you're not smart. No. Is that if you're passionate about mowing the lawn and you hate loading the dishwasher, you just gonna wanna be on your yard mowing the lawn and cutting and clipping and planting flowers. I get it. And then when someone says, you need to go in and clean the kitchen, you're like, uh, and that's what accounting is. <laughs> exactly. They wanna pull a tooth. Right. I mean, they, 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 wanna, they wanna do a root canal. No, no one wants to look at their accounting numbers. Right. And it's your passion. It is. It is. I've so, been keeping ledgers since I was babysitting. Yeah, that's what you told me. <laughs> that you, you had your babysitting revenue on a ledger sheet. I did. So, so it's not that you're dumb. It's not that you didn't learn calculus and algebra. It's just that you're not interested in it. Right. Um, you know, like I went and saw at Gamage Theater, supposedly the best violinist in the world. Uh, well, the bottom line is she's been playing violin four hours a day since she was five. Right. Okay. I would hate that. <laughs> and my mom made me, I mean, she drug me to mass every morning. That was an hour every morning. If she told me when you come home, you got to play violin for four hours. At that point, I would have ran away. <laughs> so it's not that the violinist is a genius and she's not gifted. You know what she's gifted with? The motivation and passion to want to play the violin four hours a day. You know why you don't know your numbers? Because you're not passionate about it. It's not like there's something missing in your walnut brain. It just doesn't interest you. Right. And uh, and that there these uh, these two rooms next door going on a Saturday morning in Vegas. I mean, they're in Vegas. They should be out drinking and gambling, and they're <laughs> learning about sleep apnea and loving it. Mm -hmm. That's passion. You don't have the passion for accounting. If you did, she would have given you an A. So uh, <laughs> I want to end on a um, Bear Bryant's note. Um, he told all the all the high schools. He says, you know. All the high school goes, you got really smart boys, uh, send them to Notre Dame and Harvard and Stanford. He said, you got a bunch of B students, send them to all your, your state schools. But if you got a D student, send them to the Bear in Alabama. <laughs> and he'd take those D students mm -hmm. because he knew, why were they D students? They were there to go to college. Right. They were there to play football. And he wanted the guy, <laughs> he actually wanted, he didn't want the guy who said, well, I need to get back to the library. Right. He wanted the guys that said, I hate the library. I want to just lift weights and work out and mm -hmm. be like I'm in the NFL. But uh, thank you so much for thank coming you. on my show.